thank you very much for the invitation. And let's see if uh, what I can today present can be for interest for you. Um, yeah, first of all, a, a little um, history of me. Uh, I was beginning after my studies in Barcelona of architecture. I was beginning to, to teach and to research in the University of Vienna and there uh, in the secessions building. It's this, um, this sentence that is uh, something important, I think, because defines what is modern architecture, modern art, modern design. And here in, in German uh, written, der Zeit der Kunst means that every time have um, his own art, his own uh, architecture. So um, in uh, these times in Vienna, now uh, 19 years ago from this uh, photo, I make here a little um, uh, metaphorical uh, comparison eh? because in these times in Vienna, Adolf Loos was, uh, I don't know if you know Adolf Loos, I was translating all, the, all his writings to Spanish. Um, he was uh, um, somehow, uh, well, he was not hearing very good with this left uh, ear as I am uh, having the same uh, problem. But the question is that he was also hearing what's coming or hearing what's, um, what is of the, of the zeitgeist, of the spirit of every time. And um, now, I am um, uh, supposing to, to explain to you something that also we need to, to hear because it's as, um, as what is properly from our time, as the, 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 the sentence of every time have his own art and his own architecture. So our challenge of every one of you, you know, the architects, designers, artists, the challenge is to know exactly what is our time and uh, what is uh, the, the, the art and the architecture and the design that this time uh, needs to have. So if, if we begin, um, so uh, a short view about my first, uh, 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 my first approaches to, to architecture. Uh, in the beginning, yes, I was interested in from architecture and biology and uh, was living all my life uh, next to the Gaudi's building. So all this uh, have to do with uh, what I will explain to you uh, today. And also my first house was in solar passive uh, house mode until also this last house that you see in the screen. That was my first house also with green roofs. And in the middle, I was also interesting about the digital drawings. In the 80s, uh, when I was beginning with uh, digital drawings, this was um, a kind of, of programming, uh, very complicated because, uh, well, we was fascinated in, in this time. So uh, because with, with a lot of pages of programming, we arrived to have three or four lines in perspective. And for us, this was, wow, uh, you can, uh, with uh, typing, uh, you can draw something. No, Of course, now things are very, very different. Uh, but this was remaining in this uh, moment as uh, the next slide that I explain what remains for, for now, for biodigital uh, architecture. And uh, these words are, of course, Gaudi's building, architecture, biology, solar passive house, digital driving, scripting, software. Um, surrealism and expressionism is something that gives uh, a kind of, ex of, of definitions and of background about what you can do and what, how you can interpret the, the, um, the biodigital architecture. But the first point was, or the main point was when I was beginning to do to, to the change to the biodigital architecture, founding the, the School of Architecture where I am teaching and uh, later uh, 20 years ago, founding the, the Genetic Architecture Research Group and Office and the Master of Biodigital Architecture. So, to explain what is behind all these um, points that we will see is a key concept that is the um, living beings, you know, that works um, managed by um, digital, uh, sorry, by DNA chains that at the end are information chains that you can uh, today 
a transcript in, in, in a kind of code that later you can also uh, translate to uh, zeros and ones. So we have uh, something uh, today very important that is the possibility to link between the um, DNA codes and the uh, digital codes. So this gives us a kind of genetic similarities that uh, living beings um, it's works or are controlled by this kind of uh, natural software and digital beings. What we can design and produce in a digital way, it's also um, defined and uh, controlled and managed by um, a kind of digital DNA, so to say. Yeah? Um, this, of course, is not so easy, but takes us to a position very, very different in history of mankind. That is, um, during me, um, thousands of years, um, people can only work in the surface of the things. But now with uh, genetics, uh, we can work inside of the intramolecular level uh, so that if we have the control of the order uh, of, of uh, how th things uh, grow, how things live, which functions they have, this gives a, a very, very big uh, power and difference between what we could do be, um, before that was only working in the surface of things. As I tell you, it's not so easy because of course you need first to have this interactome map. That means you need to know exactly which genes works with which genes for have different functionalities. And um, it's not so easy, of course, to, to, to control. But thanks to bioinformatics, uh, it can be. It's only a question of research. Um, so understanding these uh, two points, the, the possibility to work with bioarchitecture, so living beings that grows in the way that we need for, for our uh, needs, um, and also knowing how uh, we can manage that digital architecture, so uh, designs that digitally can produce something with machines, with CNC machines, with 3D printers, etc. This um, gives us, as I tell you, these this, uh, this, um, similarities that uh, we was organizing into um, laboratories uh, 20 years ago, the first genetic architectures laboratory with geneticists working with architects. Here is uh, our geneticist and another, and I am here. And uh, the digital laboratory where we have the machines, 3D printers, etc., cetera, um, where uh, we can also um, begin to think it built something in, in a digital way. So. Um, and then with these uh, two possibilities that, of course, we can um, take it alone, one of them, with all the power that biomanufacturing have, or all the power that digital manufacturing have, or we can think in a fusion of them, or we can juxtapose uh, both possibilities that we have. And this is what we are doing uh, from um, 20 years ago until now. Uh, from one side in the um, in the office as, as practice as uh, as uh, architecture and design here a lot of of, of little images of, of projects a market furniture benches skyscraper pavilion bridge door museums housing etc etc and also uh, what, uh, from the research and from the the, the practice uh, we are teaching in the Biodigital Architecture Master. Uh, and here is a little of, of uh, some examples of the images of the different workshops also. Here, images of the workshop of uh, Matias del Campo, Carchu, Bernard Cash, François Roche, Dennis Dolenz, Evan Douglas, etc. So um, a lot of, of um, also pioneers in, in digital architecture that uh, was collaborating, was teaching also in, in our master. Um, to say you that um, we have uh, this institute that is the, the Institute for Biodigital Architecture and Genetics that as you see, have three branches. So the branch of research that is uh, managed by the research group, genetic architectures, the branch of practice uh, of design that is managed by the genetic architectures office, 
and the uh, teaching branch that is the biodigital architecture master. So these uh, three um, points is what we are doing in Barcelona. Um, following these ideas, uh, here is a kind of, of diagram uh, to see um, what I was speaking before about the, the, um, the power of biology and the power of digital. So um, what we are trying to do is this, exactly the research and the practice and teaching about natural intelligence and artificial intelligence, about biological techniques and about digital techniques, about bio-learning and machine learning, about biomanufacturing, about digital manufacturing. So uh, this uh, gives us uh, uh, really the, the, the point of or the frontier of or the, the frontier of, of knowledge of today applied to architecture, design, and art. Um, and of course, we are in Barcelona. So the, the big advantage is that we have Antoni Gaudí and all the works of Gaudí, Salvador Dalí, that was saying the works of Gaudí as really a, a, a kind of surrealism architecture, surrealist architecture. And we have also uh, in, in our institute. The philosophers about uh, that they are speaking about emergent character of life, about complexity theories, the geneticists about genetics, and of course the sustainability as the the the, the, the main point for for um, for um, as justification about all what uh, this takes. And understanding that our cities uh, needs to take advantage of this power of nature and this power of digital technologies. And, uh, um, and this is what um, we are working on now. Uh, some publications also, the, the, the teachers of the master uh, and, and uh, with the works of the students, we are making this series of, of genetic architectures books. Another is the conferences that we organize every three years that we publish also all these books. And another series of books is the, the more monographics of different authors uh, and also events, exhibitions that we are uh, organizing sometimes. But the point is, what is behind of the, all these organization and all these concepts and all what, what is really what justifies that we are uh, involved in all these things. And uh, the point is uh, that uh, our wall is uh, really in trouble. And all of you knows uh, the, the problem of extinctions, of trash, of toll, of contamination, and all these with contradictions because we are um, living in, in cities that seems more this kind of, of of uh, complex of boxes, more than um, a, a nice forest uh, full of nature. But when we are asking about where we prefer to live, of course, people will say they prefer to live in nature and not in these boxes. But the contradiction is that our um, cities and our uh, buildings are more close to uh, this landscape of boxes as to a landscape of trees. And also the contradictions that, that he, um, Leslie also we are saying all this, that Mars, uh, going to Mars and all these, and in only two weeks, 78,000 people want to go to Mars in, in, in a kind of, of a trip of no return of uh, really without oxygen uh, in, with temperatures of 150 under zero um, with uh, storms of, of um, that uh, takes the sun during two, three months. So in, in a very, very um, um, contradictory environment when we have uh, in our earth uh, so much spaces uh, that needs more uh, the, 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 the attention of, of the research and, uh, and without the problem of, of oxygen or without the problem of, of going three years in, in, in a trip uh, so expensive without the problem of uh, temperatures. So uh, will be better that first we arrange and we solve the problems of our planet as that we go to, to 
uh, do worse things in, in other planets. No? In this sense, we was uh, making a, a little project about uh, 3D printed uh, houses uh, and with the same resources that uh, a, a colony in Mer Mars will be built in the same way with the same uh, technology, etc., but a um, thousand times cheaper. Um, we was making this project for for uh, for building uh, houses in, in Sahara, for example, um, um, because yeah, the, the the point is if we don't begin to 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 think how to solve uh, really our problem is not thinking in, in, in problems that we have not uh, so close. Uh, what will happen with our planet at the end? No? So you see the, the, the movies Blood Runner, the, the one and the two uh, that, that are uh, prophetizing a kind of, of uh, planet that uh, really will be in trouble if we don't begin to do things that uh, that solves uh, the, the uh, in, in but now in all the world it's happened this right? because this is the city of mexico in america this is the city of hong kong in asia this is the city of barcelona in europe everywhere we have the the, the same problems and sometimes our problems um goes to 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 or makes travels to people that are very very ecological no for example in new zealand the, the most ecological country, they cannot go to the beach without all the clothes uh, because the, 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 the ozone hole is exactly in, in, in the position of New Zealand and they have the highest rate of cancer of skin uh, in the world. And so our, our bad behavior uh, for the planet goes to all the places that have better behavior. So, what we can do with this because we have the responsibility to act uh, from our place if we are um, the, the the profession that we have uh, but if we are architects if we are designers um, we need to act from from our possibilities to act no? and so as architects what we can do is working with life and um, this was a project that i was um, uh, preparing for the mayors of Barcelona uh, to say, okay, we can uh, do a big garden, a big park in the roofs of Barcelona for have a very much better environment in Barcelona that is the most dense city uh, of Europe. But also uh, thinking in this, that life is what can solve our um, problems very much uh, easier, as I was telling in the beginning, the power of bioconstruction. Uh, and this is why I was making also this little uh, project of, of building uh, with um, living cells um, in comparison with the, the, the paradigm of modern architecture as Barcelona Pavilion of Mies van der Rohe here. Um, I'm telling that um, we need to begin to research about uh, how to build with living cells. And in this way, uh, we are uh, involving in, uh, or, um, in uh, trying to do uh, applications to architecture from biomanufacturing. So um, this is a, a biomanufacturing uh, 3D printed printer that we have. Um, and we try to do um, the, um, what we can uh, really uh, begin to, to think for uh, apply to architecture. In this uh, case is uh, Professor Yovna Abdallah that is working uh, with me very close to, to uh, uh, research about these, these points. And also here we see the possibilities of, of work with uh, edible um, materials so that uh, we uh, can also think in edible architecture. Mm, all this um, is, um, I was um, uh, yeah, um, proposing the, these comparisons uh, between what was uh, normally uh, in, in proposed in 20th century and what we need to propose in 21th century. So in this case is a sporopollenin house. That means that uh, sporopollenin 
uh, grows as a, a, a space, a house that can be able for 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 uh, habitat and um, taking in account that uh, sporoporin is the ma most durable material uh, that uh, organic material that that grows uh, from itself so uh, that um, can be a, a, a good uh, understanding of this that uh, this uh, idea of let houses grow uh, with the power of that nature uh, give us as let cities grow, whole cities, or also included, uh, let planets grow. Because now with uh, genetics, we can think in a research that included not only um, building with uh, living cells for, for walls, houses, cities, and landscapes, but also included to, 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 to make satellites of uh, living cells around. And in this sense, I was uh, beginning with, with experiments uh, of uh, genetics applied to needs that uh, architects are, are involved. Uh, for example, uh, to have light by night. Um, we was making with the, the gene that uh, that is the, the responsible of, of the luminescence, the bioluminescence of the in this, for example, the, this medusa, and, but from all the living beings that have also this kind of genes. Uh, this gene responsible of bioluminescence, we was uh, putting in in seven lemon trees so that you see the difference between the lemon tree that is not genetically uh, and the lemon tree with this gene uh, in the idea of having a natural light really uh, with, without installation, without uh, um, electricity. Mm. And also in a second phase, we was organizing this um, also with, with bacteria, uh, doing uh, bio lamps um, and um, uh, here in this case, illuminating a, a whole flat with uh, bio lamps. Um, so a second phase about the application of natural light in, in, um, in architecture, in space. And a third phase was working with the genes of this bacteria, but putting it in, in the ornamental plants so that uh, we can have at home uh, or in the balconies or whatever in the parks, um, plants that also gives uh, light in a natural way. And um, a, a fourth phase will be this kind of uh, uh, the, the, the genes of the, the most luminescent uh, being that exists, that is this fungus, um, that we can, these genes responsible of luminescence, uh, um, organize a, a better a, a better uh, illumination you know, in, in what we what we need so um in in this sentence of Gaudi it's interesting to to see um, that um, he he was really the first architect uh, trying to go inside of the laws of the universe so uh, this is the um, why he was arriving to the shapes of paraboloids, hyperboloids, uh, helicoids, etc., for solve the structures. So the first architect working with structures of paraboloids, hyperboloids, that are the structures that are in nature, uh, was Gaudí because he was uh, in in with this focus to discovering the laws of the universe in all its secrets. Of course, also with the uh, challenge to build beauty because. Mm, as architects, designers, what we need to do is, is, is um, that the people is happy uh, with, with the buildings uh, that are beauty. If not, uh, it's, it's a little uh, making a, a bad behavior no, for us architects. No? Um, and so is um, how um, for, for um, about this, this idea for and knowing the, the laws of the universe, the secret laws of the universe for applied to architecture in our case, for applied to design in our case. Uh, this uh, takes me to uh, use the, the electron scanning microscope. And so I was researching about the microscopical structures. So the point that um, the, the amorphous forms of cells begins to organize in structure. So the first structure of uh, how cells 
understand that needs to resist external forces are uh, these that you can see with the electron uh, microscope. Um, I was researching, for example, here in, 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 in pollen, in structures of pollen, and later uh, to uh, try to digitalize it and to um, print it or to cut it or to fabricate it with uh, digital machines. The, in this case was a kind of uh, panels that um, uh, was applied for a consulting room. And here at left is the, the same panels with the bio lamps that I was showing you before. And uh, the, the, the consulting room was organized, yes, with this uh, uh, panels uh, manufactured by, by CNC machines. And also later um, trying to do a pavilion um, in the same understanding of, of, of the pollen ra and radiolaria structures. Um, that is curious to see that the, um, the vegetables and the uh, animals have at the end the same microscopical structures, yeah, and, and the same also not microscopical patterns uh, that are equal for for all the living beings uh, that you can find. And in this um, in this research, we was uh, also uh, producing uh, this uh, digitally this uh, little pavilion. Uh, uh, with the uh, advantage that digital, uh, you can uh, scale it in, in, in different scales. So we was also doing a little lamps, um, a series of, of um, uh, uh, digital fabricated lamps. Uh, but also, uh, be uh, I was beginning uh, some years ago uh, in, in a series of furniture for 3D printed. Uh, and, um, as you see here now, uh, 3D printed, in this case, it's in the garden of our university. Um, the, the point is that um, all this serie, as you see, is um, with a kind of complex geometries um, that uh, at the end you can only um, imagine it, or you can only design it, you can only produce it if you are doing this uh, digitally. Mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, here we have the, the, this, uh, uh, what I, co uh, I call uh, the radiolaria uh, furniture serie and the hyperboloid furniture serie. Yeah? Um, but the, co the question is that um, the comparison that I am doing. Um, is that when Mies van der Rohe was uh, thinking and designing and producing this chair, um, it, it was only possible to do in 20th century with the uh, techniques of 20th century and not before. So this chair is son of the of his times. It's times is son of 20th century, but uh, the, this hyperboloid chair. Um, as the chair of Mies, it's not possible to design and it's not possible to produce um, before our times. So this chair is also son of our times. Um, and this is related with, I was speaking in the first slides uh, when I was telling you uh, to, to hear um, the, the zeitgeist, what's happened in our times, with which technologies, which ideas, and which concepts we are counting with them, uh, and with what is the challenge to do a step forward to the frontier of knowledge and not to um, be very comfortable working as, uh, as uh, 100 years ago was doing Ms. van der Rohe and all the modern architects. So um, this is our challenge to, to see um, what is really the designs and the architecture that our times um, needs or deserve more. Um, and, and it will be only in the first sentence that I was putting to you from Vienna, if this uh, uh, design and this architecture is really of our times and not of times of before. So that is really counting with our last technologies and our last concepts, our last possibilities to do and to think and to design. Uh, and in this way, 
we will really um, participating in uh, go forward in in our uh, technology in our architecture, etc. Now I will uh, show to you uh, some different uh, projects uh, that we was doing uh, from the office and um, related, as you see here, every time from bio learning. That means what we are learning from nature, from natural intelligence, and what we can do with digital tools, with artificial intelligence, what we can bio learning, but we can machine learning, what we can um, bio manufacturing and what we can digital manufacturing. And in this case, uh, this takes us, of course, to uh, geometries that uh, can only be managed by um, digital tools. And uh, what digital tools uh, allows you, uh, this is what you can uh, really propose. Uh, this was uh, for, for a, uh, a university there in Qatar and uh, uh, that was inspired by the, the um, a, build, uh, a little drawing of, of Gaudí that was uh, making a, a kind of uh, of uh, little schools uh, for in Tanger, um, but uh, from this drawing we uh, propose a, a more actual uh, uh, project and. And uh, here another um, bench that uh, we was producing in this um, idea of um, what can be drawn can be built. So um, at the end, if you are able <coughs> to draw something, uh, you will be able to build it. And um, only taking it as um, what is the, the most uh, tension that you can uh, introduce in the concept of things. And in this case, also mixing with real grass so that uh, the, the point is very comfortable that the people can, can, uh, can sit, can, can uh, sleep can, in, in real grass benches. Um, but if you think the, that the, um, everyone is in different positions and you take all these positions together and you uh, make a fusion of the positions, um, in a way that only digital tools can do. So you have, again, this step more as the hyperboloid chair that I explained to you before, that only with digital tools you can conceive, you can design, you can think, you can, um, you can manufacture uh, these, um, these designs. Mm -hmm. Another building was this uh, kindergarten um, that um, was in a, in a place of vineries and uh, is uh, very famous of wine and um, uh, the, 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 this um, um, the, for for taking the, the the fruits for the wine is is the, the the grapes yeah it's this way to to put it as a kind of of roof and uh, I was thinking that uh, it could be a, a nice environment for the children uh, to have this roof and also take it from the, the structures, the microscopical structures, um, in this case was from, from a, a, a kind of leaves um, that um, give us the possibility to think in, in spaces, in paraboloid spaces, uh, and in the middle, this uh, green roof of, of grapes, um, in a way as the, the Montserrat mountains that we have close to Barcelona, are also doing in, in, in stone. Uh, so it's a kind of, of relation of uh, this, this, this um, digital manufacturing structure um, for um, thinking for the, for the children. Um, another project in this case, one of our last projects uh, done also with Professor John Abdala is uh, these bridges for the main entrance, uh, these ramps, the main entrance of Sagrada Familia that um, here in Little, you, we see uh, left below uh, the, the ramps that goes to the main entrance that now uh, Sarah Familia uh, um, have not this, this possibility to, to, to have the access in the main entrance because it's in, in, in process. And we was proposing to the director, the architect director of the Sagrada Familia, and uh, he liked it a lot, but uh, let's see. Um, we was proposing all these uh, 
these designs um, of, of um, paraboloids, hyperboloids, etc., that also digital tools allows us. And, and um, another possibility to do with, with, um, with the digital tools is uh, meshing, is pixelations, is uh, organizing these, these uh, nets of structures. Um, and in this case, it was for a market in Casablanca in Morocco, uh, uh, taking the, the traditional basketry of, of Morocco and the, the traditional carpets of Morocco and the, um, the geometries of Arabic architecture too, uh, for organize a full roof um, in, in, with these patterns and um, uh, a full uh, floor pavement with these colors, uh, thanks to the pixelation uh, that in digital um, tools allows you to control exactly every little piece for uh, do this colorful um, pavement. Um, and also um, organizing e this with, with this kind of canopies with tensors so that uh, this basketry um, type of, of uh, canopies as, as lilies, for example, do in nature um, are more um, interesting to have a free space around, eh? as you see here, to have a, a big free space uh, and with this uh, basketry canopies um, forgive the shadow and, and forgive for make space. Uh, another project in this case with other possibilities of digital tools that is organizing uh, designs with force fields, with attractors, uh, was a park in, in Cornellà, close to Barcelona, that um, again, um, as, as you can see, for example, in the, in the grain of wood, uh, how the, 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 these lines uh, are so similar to magnetic uh, lines and um, how uh, digital tools allows you also with these attractors to organize a absolutely harmonical uh, design. So, of course, uh, following uh, the, the, the vegetation or the activities, uh, the flow bands that uh, that it's organized here, or um, how to do uh, the organization of, of the parts or of the, the, the ways. Um, but um, being sure that all, every line, every little curve here, because it's managed by digital tools, it have an intrinsic harmony in, in, all, in all that. Um, and this is something that is a big advantage of digital tools that uh, we need not more to be Michelangelo's or Gaudi's for make something absolutely harmonic, uh, harmonical. Um, we only need to use digital tools and the possibilities that digital tools offer us. Also with the force fields, I was organizing this, uh, designing this, this housing, this solar passive housing uh, and all the park around so that the, 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 how flows the, the park and the, and the green uh, uh, is how also um, comes the, 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 these housings. Um, and uh, following the sun, searching the sun for half every, every apartment, his uh, winter garden uh, with the possibility to have passive solar housing. And another, um, design was for this museum using the possibility of fractals. And of course, because the Arabic architectural patterns uh, give us um, a kind also of uh, fractal geometry, the possibility to follow fractal geometry. In this case was also a big park with a kind of archeological sites that uh, we need to um, preserve and to organize uh, little pavilions uh, for preserve these uh, excavations. And uh, all was uh, organized by these uh, patterns, um, also with, with the idea of fractality in the geometry of um, Arabic patterns. Um, and now another possibility with digital tools, fractals, because fractals is something that uh, is common in, our, in, in nature too. If you see that um, everything in, in, in nature is organized in fractality. So 
uh, the, the big forms are uh, following little forms that are following microscopical uh, forms. And with this three level of fractality, uh, nature uh, arrived to have a very much um, um, efficient structure. And in this case, we was organized, we was designing uh, a kind of telecommunication antenna uh, normally, mm, antennas are uh, a kind of uh, vertical towers, mm? but um, in this case, I uh, wanted to, to have a, not, not a vertical tower, but a kind of a crown, a light crown. Uh, by night, mm, it will be illuminated, and uh, by day, uh, the, uh, these balls here are uh, solar collectors also because the idea was to organize uh, not only an antenna but also a kind of autosufficient, uh, uh, self-sufficient uh, fractal uh, machine of purification of air. Mm, I don't know if you see here, uh, I will take this here, but anyway, uh, the point is that here, mm, of course, here first was the, the study of, of uh, fractality um, of uh, of this um, this um, well the the the, um, the, uh, well, the, the Inter Leon that we say in Spanish. Yeah, um, but here the 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 fractality that that we can see in the in, in this uh, little uh, plant. Um, was reproduced in three in, in eight levels uh, in this case uh, um, following the, uh, the the low of fractality until having a, a whole dome and uh, it's in this dome that we are uh, organizing the the, the antennas um, the parabolic antennas the linear antennas the um, balls of, of uh, collectors and uh, the light uh, by night Mm, for half this kind of uh, Stadtkrone that Bruno Taut uh, was uh, speaking in the 19 in, in, in last century. But also this fractality allows us to uh, have this, uh, this um, air purification machine so that from every little tube we uh, take the air around. And this was for Santiago de Chile, that is a very contaminated city. And um, of course, it's not for arrange all the contamination of the city, but it's only for, for a kind of symbolic uh, machine. Um, and uh, taking the air uh, through all these tubes and uh, with the filters inside, uh, having a uh, purify uh, air in the middle where the people come to, to the restaurant, to, the, to, the, um, to see the views uh, from this mountain, etc. But we go now to another kind of possibilities that digital tools allows us, that is Voronoi. And Voronoi is really a um, fascinating kind of structure that uh, allows efficiency in structures, in behaviors, in the functionalities of plants and animals. And you will see that plants and animals in all the levels of scales of them, uh, you can find the Voronoi a pattern. Mm -hmm. uh, for this design, this was a multifunctional building and a park in, in Austria. Mm, and um, uh, I was taking the idea of Voronoi for organized this uh, the diversity, for organized spatial richness, for organized hierarchical paths, uh, so that um, as we learn from nature, because this is all the time the sentence that I put here below, from bio learning to digital tools. So uh, with bio learning, learning from nature, learning the, 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 that nature um, teach you uh, the, the, this kind of organization that is an harmonical organization, that is a, a more efficient and, and, um, uh, organization, and that have hierarchies in the structure, a primary hierarchy, a second hierarchy, what is uh, organizing surface, what is organizing structure. So this um, let you organize also something that is more complex, thanks to digital tools. So uh, complexity uh, takes interest, takes attraction for the human perception. And uh, in this case was uh, 
uh, also uh, the, the the whole organization of of, uh, of the streets of the of the um, squares uh, of the haven um, the port um, and also the the, the building um, every time uh, looking with the electron microscope to the Voronoi structures and uh, with the same uh, Voronoi idea um, this design was uh, also of course solar passive uh, housing organizing this uh, whole uh, building Mm, from one side uh, as um, Voronoi structure, uh, but also as a self-sufficient uh, house. So mm, to say, as was the antenna, because uh, the, the, for sustainability, we need to think that mm, everything that we do, we need to uh, implement it in self sufficiency. So in this case, uh, using um, urban uh, agriculture, urban beekeeping, and having here little shops for, for sell the flowers the, the, or the vegetables or the honey uh, that the, 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 the bees uh, do uh, in all this, in this building that in the middle have so hanging gardens and here also the diagram of the um, of the solar uh, working. Here um, you see the different um, Voronoi structures. In this case is from a, a um, rose petal um, with a hand, 800 magnification or here is uh, of pollen. So you see that for surfaces as a, a rose petal or for the pollen. So functions very different. And, and uh, one is on surface, another is a volume. Or here, if you, you cut a section of a cactus, um, you can also see the three-dimensionality of the Voronois inside of the Voronoi tubes of the cactus. So this gives you the idea of um, how um, we need to think our structures. If um, uh, if uh, nature is uh, telling this uh, to you, some someone is, uh, but I don't know how to uh, do this because uh, someone is calling for 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 questions. Maybe um, it's better we, we finish and and we have the questions. Also with Voronoi, um, I was designing this market. In this case, for Peru, for Lima, you see here also the the, the fractality of the um, leaves uh, with three levels of Voronois for uh, organizing um, with the idea of the stomata, this, this, uh, how leaves are um, breaking. Um, so in the same way, we organize a, a full market that is um, organized with, with uh, agricultural roofs um, that uh, you can sell uh, in, in the shops, but everywhere, as you see, is um, the shops around uh, patios, uh, specialized patios, but also the, the, um, between the shops are the uh, more little um, uh, patios for, for bread. So we have a kind of, of structure, as you see here, that is... Um, the, the shops around little patios for for oxy, oxygenize for for half the, the circulation of air from the bottom of the parking to the roof and um, so that we are um, uh, being sure that all is very good um, um, with, with the air around um, because there's little um, patios but also around with this uh, more social uh, with possible socialities, uh, possibilities, um, patios uh, bigger um, around the, the other level of, uh, of different organization of uh, fractal Voronois, as I was explaining to you. And now uh, also we are in the last part of, of this little uh, speech. Yeah, uh, This was an installation also with a Voronois structure of um, snails, as you see here, um, following a, a pattern of um, 
of Voronoi. Voronoi, that uh, with, with uh, the tension between these columns, we do uh, cables and we hang uh, carbash leaves uh, that uh, snails uh, like a lot. Um, in a kind of metaphor, no? because uh, it's uh, symbolically um, associate the, the, the Voronoi of the skin of the snails that you see that have also this fractal structure, a big Voronoi with little Voronois and a cellular little um, Voronoi organization, and also the cabbage uh, leaves that have bigger Voronois with more little Voronois with more little Voronois. So this, this fractality that we, we call in the installation, infinite fractality, the installation, we let that the snails begin to eat here. So um, in a way to um, explain what will happen us if we don't uh, begin to think um, where we are, which is our environment. No, um, these snails, of course, will eat uh, uh, so much and, um, until they uh, will finish with the with the leaves, and the leaves will will um, the snails uh, will fall, mm -hmm. so that. Uh, mm, well, it's, it's, as I told you, it's a kind of a little metaphor about our planet, uh, snails uh, and uh, fractalities. Um, anyway, our problem, as you know, is uh, COVID and we was also uh, helping a little with, with uh, things of COVID, uh, with our 3D printers, organizing uh, these, these uh, designs and fabrication of masks of, of, for the doors handles uh, for, so that uh, you don't need to to take uh, to open the door with the hand um, and also designing different types of, of, of uh, masks here um, and also for architecture uh, thinking that uh, the problem when all the people was closed in in his mm. uh, his uh, houses uh, and they have not balconies, they had really problems of, of uh, compared with people that have terraces or balconies. So we was designing a kind of also Voronoi balconies, very light uh, structures that we can hang directly in the facades of uh, houses that maybe have not balconies, not terraces, uh, so that people can uh, be a little more happy in this uh, moment of of, uh, of COVID, and um, also because this uh, pandemic, um, after two months that we was closed and nobody was cutting grass, cutting and uh, nothing in the streets, you know all these uh, YouTube videos that come the the animals uh, inside of the cities and all this. Um, this was a big discovery uh, because uh, close to my house, uh, all these plants was growing um, that never was uh, there before. Never I had uh, close to my house this kind of uh, in fantastical, amazing flowers, little flowers, uh, and they only was growing because nobody was uh, cutting nothing uh, during two months. So this was mm, the action to say, okay, biodiversity and our planet will be very much happy if humans don't go out uh, from his homes. And I was um, designing this kind of little signals and little mm, uh, words uh, for put uh, uh, in places so that uh, the, 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 the people take care of, of this uh, question of um, let uh, life grow. Mm, as uh, in the beginning, I was telling to you, let uh, houses grow, let cities grow, let planets grow. Mm, and um, in, with this uh, other action um, um, that we was painting in, in this special tree in Barcelona that have these forms, we was painting little, little A's uh, also with the students around the city and making a kind of action to, to say, okay, the, we need to wake up uh, to nature, but also mm, that nature um, mm, wake up and, and see us. So these have these this both uh, ideas uh, that um, we need to, to 
to take attention of nature, wake up to nature, but also attention because <laughs> nature is watching us. And um, if we have not exactly good behaviors, uh, this will be uh, a big problem for us um, if we don't take care of what nature can um, show us, what nature can teach us, and what we can learn from nature. So thank you for listening. Uh, I hope all of you arrive until this point and uh, well, so um, I am uh, happy thank to you. be here and to share all this thank you. with you. <laughs> thank you, Doctor. We we have some uh, questions. Um, yeah. We, uh, uh, if you actually were raising hands, yes, Doctor Abir. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you so much for this very interesting talk. Um, I really admire your attempts to work with biomimicry and bio bioarchitecture, but I, I have so many comments uh, coming out from, from your talk. I don't know exactly where to start with, but um, if, if, if I start with that example that you brought up from Barcelona city, Barcelona is a city that is trying to go to become a smart city now in the 21st century. Yet they are, uh, you said that you are working on a project for the city to um, uh, kind of include or uh, uh, put kind of uh, biomimicry or bioarchitecture uh, in that city. So that contradiction between going to be smart where you ignore uh, the human being kind of, and uh, their attempt to do biomimicry maybe summarizes what I want to say. Now, the, the, the concept is, uh, the, the dilemma is, is much deeper than um, working with one building or one object like furniture piece or uh, uh, artifact or, or even a building, but it, it has to go um, into more factors, into more depth to tackle social, political, economic issues, which biomimicry is uh, short of doing this. Uh, biomimicry in a way is, for me, is kind of a new fad for achieving sustainability, but on the level of the building. So in a way it deals with the, with the part rather than the whole as a system. So for example, uh, you use biomimicry either to uh, satisfy some environmental um, uh, issues or structural, or sometimes you turn biomimicry into kind of creating new aesthetics, like uh, when you brought that example of Gaudi. Mm -hmm. So Gaudi did not go deep into the genetics of, of the architecture as much as he dealt with architecture in terms of form making uh, with reference to nature. So, uh, so uh, I don't know how, how we can expand biomimicry to work on the level of the urban and the city and the social so that we can tackle issues as pollution, as you mentioned. And for me now, biomimicry is very much in, uh, enclosed within its boundaries of creating kind of a building that is talking to itself only. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, the point is, for one side, I don't like so much the word biomimicry because uh, includes the idea of imitation. And um, this is not exactly what I want. Or... Bioarchitecture, okay, bioarchitecture. Because the, the, it's not about bioimitation, uh, bio it's more uh, or biomimicry. Is more about bio learning, about what we can learn from nature. So, from nature, we can learn all. We can learn absolutely all. How, um, how to build, how to live, how to, um, to take food, how to organize us, uh, absolutely all. So, we need only to see everything um, and, um, and to ask to nature um, how nature is solving what we need to solve. In this way, um, I, I, I am proposing different things. Of course, I cannot solve all the planetary problems, but for example, uh, nature is teaching us, um, you have a way of half natural light. You have a way of half natural heat. You have a way of half natural organization of societies. That is, for example, what we can learn from nature in a, in a urban scale. 
uh, in a territorial scale. Uh, first is something that I was telling a little uh, fast, uh, self-organization and self-sufficiency. This is absolutely uh, a, a, a first lesson that nature teaches for living in urban um, environments. What this means from, from things very, very specifically, for example, uh, why uh, I am um, eating cherries from Chile when I am in Europe, for example. Yeah, because um, it's Christmas and uh, the cherries comes by plane, but uh, cherries is for April, not for December in Europe. So, um, but people are doing this and uh, in, in December is full of cherries and grapes and uh, things that are not the appropriate for, for the time and the zone. So the first point that nature is teaching us is not take things that are so far away. So you need to be self-sufficiency, self-sufficient in, in different areas. So what, how you can be self-sufficient yourself, you as, as, as human, as person, individually how you can be self-sufficient in your room and your habitat of your family, how you can be self-sufficient in the um, area, in, in the neighborhood that you are living. So um, these things is what in a human scale we need to think in, in also in a fractality of self-sufficiency, but it's crazy that we are not thinking in this way. So we are not learning that nature is not working so. A tree is not importing things from America. A tree is living in the place that he is. And this is something that Gaudí was teaching. Gaudí was not only um, someone that is making crazy forms. He was uh, understanding how works the structures of nature. And when someone was uh, only seeing the surfaces of the forms of Gaudí, uh, they asked to Gaudí, Gaudí, from where you take this imagination? Um, where, from which is your, your master, your teacher? And he said, my teacher is this tree. He had a tree close to his office. No? And he, this is my teacher, not uh, Le Corbusier, Mies or whatever that are working for middle Europe, uh, for the conditions that are um, able in other countries. So um, this is an, another point that uh, the, the use of the um, low technique that nature gives us, not the biological nature. So this is why also I was speaking about uh, solar passive architecture. So uh, which, uh, um, which possibilities uh, the, the physicality of nature uh, give us to work in a very much self-sufficient way. So all this that have to do with the, the thinking in self-sufficiency uh, have to do to solve urban problems and the problems of, of all the countries that they are thinking in, in movement all the time. Yeah? Uh, and, and for example, the, the, in Spain is, is crazy. We have um, a lot of, of, of big uh, cars traveling all the street, all the ways, uh, and not trains, for example. Um, what is the problem? That one train uh, contaminates uh, very much less as uh, the, the, the 50 big cars that, uh, that uh, takes things off of the trains, yeah? Um, but the problem is that ecology uh, will be only solved if we solve the social problems. So it's not, nothing, we cannot solve the sustainability problems, uh, the ecological problems of the planet if we don't think at the same time in the social problems. Because uh, as I tell you this of, of the train, uh, the problem is that are 50 families that are living from these 50 drivers with the, with the big cars. Uh, and only one family lives uh, of the big train that transport what 50 cars transports. So um, the problem is again, you know, we need to balance Another thing that we need to understand from nature is the, the balance of things. 
we need to balance the social and the ecology all the time. And uh, we cannot solve one thing without the other. It's, it's what it's called the, the integral ecology. So of course, um, we need sociologists and urbanists and a lot of, of politics that works together with uh, biologists, with geneticists, with architects, whatever. No? So um, I don't know if I answer or not so much the, the question or, or some points that we can uh, discuss or... Yeah, we have Dr. Abdel Mahsan. <clears throat> Uh, good evening. Uh, yeah. uh, thank you very much for a very uh, stimulating uh, lecture. And uh, uh, I, I have great respect uh, to your work. Um, and I think, Yanni, uh, just stimulating the imagination in the direction of nature, biology, sustainability, um, and also uh, to some extent, to you touch it upon uh, social aspects. Uh, this is great in itself. Uh, now, I'll allow me to be a little bit uh, critical in, in certain parts. Uh, it seems to me that in, in several works, uh, um, you are geared towards biological forms uh, rather than uh, biological processes and sustainability. Uh, and I will give some examples. Uh, for example, the park that um, uh, resembles the grains of wood. This could have, uh, this park could have uh, utilized rain collection, rainwater collection. Uh, beautiful umbrellas uh, in Morocco mm -hmm. with uh, fantastic, uh, fantastically beautiful uh, uh, texture and um, uh, uh, surface treatment of. Um, ornamental arabesque ornament, ornaments. This could have uh, been utilized for dew collection, collecting water from the air. Mm -hmm. uh, the, in Qatar University, uh, nothing was mentioned about um, climatic treatment except the um, uh, fenestration or the um, uh, cloistra treatment of surfaces. But uh, there are a lot of things in the Arab heritage related to wind catchers, wind towers, uh, and evaporative cooling, uh, thermal mass, all of these could have been utilized so that you can have a real sustainability and not only biological uh, uh, forms. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about um, uh, self-sufficiency in housing and this is, I think, is, is probably one of the most, most important areas uh, for the world today, because uh, the limited income people are not cared for uh, enough, especially by imaginative architects. Yani the mm. star architects are always in the direction of forms and related to big companies and uh, big projects, mega mm. projects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they neglect uh, uh, low cost housing. Mm. And you are trying to do something here, but you did not give uh, enough details about it. Uh, yeah. The last point, uh, a specific point, uh, the work in um, uh, civil, in uh, the huge plaza in civil with a wooden roof, do you consider it also to be a digital, uh, bio, bi biologically digital uh, architecture? And what is your comment on that? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I thank you very much. I respect your work very much. Thank you. No, from one side, the two things. From one side, what you say about wind towers, etc. Yes, as I was showing you the section of my project of the university in Qatar that is organized as all with wind towers and is organized also with pergolas that make shadows, etc. Yeah. Also, the the project of the Sahara little house that I was also showing you is organized with the possibility to have have geothermical energy and also with a kind of, of tubes that uh, allows to, to have ventilation. It's also um, taking the typology of this little house is take, take it from the traditional typology of Sahara houses that have these uh, central patios, etc. So, of course, the, the, um, 
sometimes the um, low technology of vernacular architecture is teaching you also a lot of things. Mm, only that um, vernacular architecture, mm, it's interesting because it's also uh, a kind of evolution that uh, you can take advantage. Ad advantage. So um, when something is vernacular architecture, traditional architecture means that uh, it has survived during thousands of years. So this means that uh, an architecture that can survive thousands of years is as uh, in biology happens that uh, the, the, the processes and systems of biology uh, of, of, of plants, animals is because they have survived all the proofs of, of living. So the, the most strongest, the most efficient um, works better. Uh, this happened um, in, in a kind of biological comparison with vernacular architecture and with low technique uh, that vernacular architecture have. Uh, so this is also why I, I was showing you my designs about solar passive architecture that have to do with vernacular architecture. Yeah? Um, the other point um, was uh, about the, um, um, uh, what was the, the when we, uh, we were speaking about, um, now, now I forget. See, if if you can repeat, please, the the, the last points. Well, uh, maybe you um, you are talking about civil and ah yeah, civil uh, plaza yeah. in civil and yeah. this, this yeah. this but but, uh, yeah. but but uh, allow me to say that uh, in relation to rainwater collection and dew collection, there uh, there is a lot of frontier to be uh, discovered and incorporated into mm -hmm. uh, biologically digital architecture. Mm -hmm. No, no, of course. And, and when we mention about self-sufficiency, of course, means that uh, you need to collect all your water. Uh, you cannot uh, only, as, as nature do, nature is taking and remaining. Nature don't, don't produce waste. Uh, so this is something important for, for us for learn in cities, in houses, not produce waste. And we produce a lot of waste. Uh, when, if we take, if comes water from outside, we need to to take it and to 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 use it very much uh, as we do, because we take water and they goes and we do water they goes and it's it's uh, about Sevilla. It's uh, well, of course, it's um, something that it's uh, done by digital tools and uh, it's only possible to 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 build with digital tools and, and to digital fabrication. Yeah? Um, another thing is if this is, uh, um, is expensive, not expensive, uh, useful, not useful. Of course, in Sevilla is inter is, it needs to, to have shadows and uh, to have humidity because the, the in, in summer it's uh, absolutely crazy, the temperatures, etc. Yeah, But um, yeah, maybe, um, uh, mm, we need to see if really mm, 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 it, it, the balance is is okay. The balance to to do the effort of of the of this uh, building in Sevilla, or the balance what uh, what this means in 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 resources. And, uh, but uh, also in this point, uh, mm, sometimes we need also to do uh, uh, other kind of efforts or other kind of. Um, waste of energy um, because humans have other needs. And, and this is also an important point. And this is also a, the, the point that I was telling about the, the, um, the need of designing harmonical things because humans needs to be involved in beauty. And uh, humans needs, um, it's, it's a human need. To, to, to have a, a nice house, <laughs> not, not to, to live in, 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 uh, in, in houses that uh, is better that nobody see because you shame of your house. No, for you will be great that uh, the people come and see, wow, what a ni ha nice house you have. So um, this is also a human need. So much as the, our need of, of drink or of food or, or, or to be comfortable, uh, we have also another uh, um, needs. And 
also the, 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 the point of symbolic or the point of enthusiasm, of beauty that can have the, the, this building in Sevilla as others of other architects in, in the world um, is somehow also a need of humans that someone is uh, something very amazing that you go and you are happy to see this and um, so sometimes we need to see that again the balance between needs uh, and, and between resources um, for for use it and uh, if um, was a human need uh, to have this big building um, that of course you can have very much ex uh, cheaper um, buildings for the same use but sometimes um, we learn also from nature that not always nature is absolutely efficient and this is also something symbolical. For example, um, where nature is absolutely no efficient is in reproduction. Because you see how many um, um, seeds or eggs or pollen uh, expand around and how many uh, really um, grows as uh, a definitive uh, being. How many fruits and seeds of trees falls and how less they uh, grow as trees. So um, this is also something interesting because nature somehow uh, is teaching us that uh, love uh, needs to be generous, infinite. <laughs> and reproduction is the the the, the symbol of, of love no so uh, somehow um, we can have this um, this excess of resources of energy as nature teach us for reproduction uh, because it's something that also humans needs but okay i don't know if somehow i can answer these points or that we discuss uh, can discuss. Thank you, Doctor. We we have uh, only two written questions so far, um, and we can wrap up then. Uh, the question from uh, Noor: uh, Do you think that uh, deconstructivism as a whole movement in architecture, using the what can be drawn can be built, not following the geometrical way and form follow function, is a way to solve problems in our cities today? I don't understand exactly. Uh, the constructivism is a way to, to solve problems. You you mean? Yes, it's in in terms of not following the geometrical way and form, and to follow function. Hmm. Mm, to say that the constructivism is not follow function is this? The point? Let me let me read it again for you. Do you think that deconstructivism as a whole movement? in architecture using the what can be drawn can be built, not following the geometrical way and form follow the function is a way to solve problems in our cities? Well, I don't understand exactly, but anyway. Um, well, the constructivism is, is, is yes, it's a movement of the 80s. It's, it's, uh, it's now not, not more, well, it was a, a very trendy movement and all the people was doing the constructivism, but all the people that was the pioneers of, of the constructivism, they moved to digital architecture. So you see uh, Kopp Himmelblau, Zachar Hadid, all this was pioneers in the constructivism. Of course, Frank Gehry, <laughs> the, in, in the 80s, they was the, the pioneers in the constructivism and they move in the beginnings of the 20th century ones or uh, Gary first in the uh, late late uh, 90s they move to uh, um, digital architecture that is not the constructivist architecture is the organic architecture is the, the digital organicism so um, are, are are different things I, I I don't understand exactly if if Mm, this have to do if the constructivism is, is not follow function or whatever. But anyway, the, you can have um, 
perfect uh, deconstructivism architecture that is follow function without problem. Um, and this is another thing that uh, we can learn in nature that is not um, is but understood understood uh, the idea of form follow function because it's not what's happening in biology. <laughs> if you see this from the internal side of biology, if you see from outside, from an external uh, observation of biology, if you see this as, as a historical evolution of biology, you can think that uh, form solo function, that was what uh, Sullivan uh, began to think in 18, uh, 1892. But, uh, is not exactly this. In nature, first is form, and after comes function. So um, cells don't understood, don't understand if they are growing for B hand or for B air or whatever. Uh, when cells grows, um, and uh, later the form that cells are organized can be used this begins to 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 evolve yeah to to um, i mean um, first comes the form and if the form is able to be used for some specific functions this form is successful and will continue if the form don't works for the functions that uh, it's needed the form will dead and will not continue, will not evolve. But what is first is form. <laughs> so this is also something that architects and designers can learn from nature, that first is our idea in form. And we need to make a fusion of how um, needs to work functionally perfect and functionally efficient our forms, but form comes before. Mm. So this is very problematic and it's very interesting to discuss. And uh, maybe we need another, <laughs> another evening to discuss, but uh, think about because uh, cells first organized in forms and later will be used as functions. But also the, the mind of, of architects is working first in forms and, and at the end we, we try to make the fusion. And this is very interesting because the, the, the sentence of Gaudi that, uh, that says um, forging the form of the idea, uh, the, 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 the words that I was uh, showing to you is, is, is written of Gaudi that uh, the, the, the challenge is to forge the form of the idea. So first we have the idea and, 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 and we need to give a form and these forms need to be functional and needs to be efficient and needs to work well, etc. But um, if, and, and if this form don't work functionally and efficiently, we change and we search another form. But so. I yeah. Learned. I, uh, th I would like to thank you again, Dr. Alberto, and uh, this was very informative and inspiring lecture, actually, um, and mostly to a little bit, a bit new for our area, maybe. And uh, we can wrap up now, and uh, hope to see you soon. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention and for your kindness. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.